Today I'm going to be making bagels. This recipe is by Peter Reinhardt. I consider him to be the master of breads. You'll see that I weigh all of my ingredients here. Weighing just makes it faster and more accurate so you can reproduce your recipes more consistently. Begin with preparing the wet ingredients. I use honey. Barley malt syrup is more traditional. Brown rice syrup for agave nectar will work as well. Just something to soften your dough and give your yeast something to feed on overnight. You mix the yeast with the honey. Weigh the salt. I highly recommend weighing salt. A tablespoon of salt is not the same if you go from one brand or one grind to another. I know it sounds silly, but just trust me, weigh your salt. Your recipes will come out better. Then warm your water to about 95 degrees. Add that to the salt, yeast, and honey. Then you just want to mix those well to combine them. Make sure you get all the honey off the bottom. The warm water will dissolve it very easily. Then, weigh out your flour. A nice quality bread flour makes bagels much better. I use King Arthur because I'm from Vermont. Arrowhead Mills is also a great option. Attach the dough hook to your mixer. Alternatively, you could do this by hand if you're feeling like getting a little bit of exercise. I use the mixer because it's fast, easy, and again, it gives consistency because it mixes the same every time. Pour the wet ingredients right into the flour. So you're going to mix on the lowest speed your mixer does for three minutes. You'll see in the video, the dough is still a little bit frayed on the edges. So I'm going to pull it out off the mixer, just kind of pack it into a ball. Get it all nice and tight so that the moisture can evenly distribute. We're going to let it rest for five minutes. After that, put it back on the mixer and mix on low speed again for three minutes until you have a nice glossy finish and the dough is no longer sticking to the sides. It should be tacky to the touch, but you should only need a tiny coating of flour on the counter to work with it and have it not stick at all. If you were to alternatively do the last knead by hand, you want to get the dough so that it's shiny and firm and it stops sticking to your hands in the counter without any flour. Here I'm just going to knead it into a ball. It makes it easier to get the air bubbles out of it, stretch the skin tight, and then I'm doing a larger batch so I have to slice it in half, otherwise it will take hours to cool in the fridge and the yeast will work the whole time and I'll end up with overproof dough. You could form the bagels now and let the shaped bagels proof overnight. I'm doing a larger batch here. If you were to do one batch of six bagels and you have plenty of room in your fridge to put a sheet pan in overnight, that's definitely an option, but I find it much easier to let the dough proof for the first time in mixing bowls. Uh, if you're going to use a Tupperware style container like I did on the left, a glass bowl with a snap-on rubber top, just make sure you don't snap the top on all the way. The yeast needs to work and the dough needs to grow. Traditionally, you refrigerate them overnight if you make the dough a couple days ahead of time, it's perfectly fine. Uh, some people say you'll get more flavor if you let it rest longer. So then after you take it out of the fridge the next day, you want to just let it rest for about a half hour to an hour and warm up before you shape the bagels. The dough is going to be really firm. It's going to fight you a lot if it's too cold. So you want to just divide it into even sized pieces. Uh, typically a bagel is approximately 120 grams. I prefer something a little smaller. So I usually do around 90 grams. For each pound of flour you use in the mix, you can expect to get roughly half a dozen bagels. Since my bagels are smaller here, I believe that I end up with 31 bagels. The so rolling with the ball here is really an important technique for making rolls and things. It helps with the bagels because it gives you a nice tight skin to start with. So you want to just put the ball on an unoiled, unfloured counter so there's a little bit of friction. And then you want to just roll it in a circular motion, gripping it with your fingers and letting the heel of your hand and the sides of your fingers really stretch it out. And when it comes time to shape the bagels, there's many ways to do it. I prefer the old fashioned way of just rolling them out into a log. Uh, the colder your dough is, my dough is quite cold here. The more it's going to fight you, it's not going to want to roll into a thin log. 
Uh, watch out that you don't have a tall center in it as well, otherwise you'll get a very lopsided table. And then you want to just fold the ends over, overlap them by about two inches. Uh, if your hands are smaller than mine, you can put your whole hand inside the bagel and, and roll it. I have to work it a little bit differently because I have slightly bigger hands. You just roll that back and forth on the counter and press on the seams. And after a few rolls, the ends will stick together. If you find that your dough isn't sticking, just put a little dab of water on the seam and it'll come right together instantly. Arrange them on a greased sheet pan. The separation that I use here is not quite enough. You'll see that when I put the bagels in the water, two of them do stick together a little bit, so just be aware of that. Probably six bagels to a pan is, is a better number to work with. Then cover them loosely with plastic wrap. I just use one sheet with a little air on the side. The dough is already fairly dry on the outside. You don't have to worry about it drying too much. And then just let the plastic wrap sit over the top and allow the bagels to rise. And give them about a half an hour and you turn your oven on, get it as hot as you can. You want to get this, the walls and the floor of your oven as hot as they can be. While the bagels finish rising, you can get baking soda and salt and add them to water and bring that to a boil. And finally, your toppings. Here I have some chopped onions, a little caraway seed blend, some sesame seeds and salt in it, and straight sesame seeds. So how do you know when your bagels are proofed? Simple. You just drop one in a bowl of cold water and see if it floats. You want it to float flat, not at an angle, and it shouldn't be submerged. If one bagel's ready, they're all done proofing. When your bagels are done proofing, it's time to put them in the water. So gently lift them on a slotted spoon, spatula, something like that. I'm using a spoonula here where you can gently set them into the boiling water. You don't want to drop them in and pop all those bubbles that they grew while they were proofing. Boil them for about 60 seconds on the first side. Then give them a nice gentle flip over. And you're gonna boil them for about 45 seconds on the other side. The longer you boil them, the chewier they'll be, but the less they'll rise during the bake. I like to place my bagels on a wire rack briefly when they come out of the boiling water. I allow them to cool while I put fresh bagels into the water. And then I gently touch the top of them to my toppings. Most toppings will stick just fine without an egg wash, but more stubborn toppings such as onions will require something extra to get them to stick. While you do this, be careful not to press too hard on the tops of the bagels. You don't want to deflate them here either. You still want to preserve those bubbles for the bake. When you finish putting toppings on your bagels, give the sheet pan one last very light spray of oil. You could also use parchment paper. Just make sure you don't put too much oil on because you don't want oily bottoms in your bagels when they're done baking. And drop the oven temperature to 450 degrees. Put the bagels in the oven. They'll bake for about 15 minutes. You want them to be golden brown. Depending on your oven, you may need to rotate them partway through the baking. Allow the bagels to cool on wire racks for about a half an hour. And you've made bagels.